Another Positive Views production. All right, y'all. It's time for another episode of Top of... So my old um, music teacher friend, Alan Souza, yeah, he sent me this thing the other day that said, um, I was telling my grandson about the song Bingo, and he said, who's Bingo, the farmer or the dog? And he said, that blew my mind. Never thought about it. He's really? Like, Do you get it? Because like... Think how the song goes. There was a farmer had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, really? Was Bingo the name of the farmer or the dog? Uh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. And Bingo was his name. Oh, yeah. Was his name. Oh, yeah. I guess there was a farmer. Well, and the farmer had a dog. Well, could be the farmer's name is. Could be that. Could do it again. Could do it again. Could come dancing. Come, come dancing. Could you know by a well-respected man? That sound like kink song. Who could be in you know skin and bone, <laughs> and he could be a dedicated follower of fashion. True that. True. Yeah, the hard way. The destroyer could be living on a thin line. Stop your sobbing. The end of the day, alcohol, where have all the good times gone? This time tomorrow, on a low budget. Well, that sounds like our new album, low yeah. bu- No Budget. That's right, No Budget. Yeah, and our continuing tribute to the kinks. Yeah, let's crack now, them open. Now, whose feet Zero. are those on that, this, this, this? Oh, wow, you gotta ask me that. Everybody Who asks. Is that? Well, she's an actress, and it's Julianne yeah. Moore. Really? Yeah. Nice. Julianne Moore. Yeah. But I gotta say, I'm getting some uh, backlash on these feet here. Some people aren't liking that on the cover. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I think the same reason they didn't really like her feet on the red carpet. Mm-hmm. And that reason was. I think it's kind of lame, actually, but she wasn't. She didn't have nail polish on, and her feet are sticking off the edge of the. Oh, uh, off the world. Off the edge of the. Yeah. Well, the fashion shoe. Mm. On the other hand, I think it's a brilliant uh, spoof on the Kinks album, low budget. Mm-hmm. But I'm afraid it's too much of an in joke that so many people don't know it. They just see those feet and go, what's the deal? Yeah, it's an inside thing, right? Yeah. You know? So, uh, I, I guess... The I further was... in you go... Yeah. The further, you know... So, you know, that's... That's the way that, that budget goes lower and lower. <laughs> we had no budget, so I don't know how yeah. much lower we can go than that. We went pretty low, but uh, I guess not everybody maybe wants to go with us there. I don't know. I think they should. They, they should sh- check it out. This is a way yeah. more rocking situation here. Yeah. When people hear this, they're going to think, oh my God, it's amazing. So we just had a a, uh, a performance at the Michaels on May. Oh, yeah. And we're going to branch out and go do a show at the Columbia on February 29th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
I hear the Kumwa is like one of the best sounding places in our town. Uh, it has a hundred thousand dollar sound system. Hundred thousand dollar sound. Believe so. It's an up, been upgraded. Well, I've also um, every show sounds good there. So. Yeah, uh, I, I've done a couple of uh, Sinatra shows, and yeah, they've all been really good. I don't have to worry about things not sounding good. That's amazing. Yeah, so I think that we will sound good when we play the Kuambla on February 29th. So. And what year is that? That's 2020, right? That's going to be 2020. That's in the next, that's in the new year. All right, cool. We got new songs coming up, right? We do? Well, are we going to do some new songs? We're definitely going to do new songs. Have you decided what new song you're going to do? Well, we have to make the album first, then I'll know. Oh, and know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Set myself up for that one. Yeah. Stop your sobbing. I'd, I'd say that we have five or six good candidates for new songs yeah. already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Superman? Is, yeah, that's one of them. Mm-hmm. Dave really wants that one. Okay. I think that's in. Yeah. I think Rick's got some he wants. Um, 20th Century Man. Mm-hmm. And I have a couple. And mm-hmm. You probably have a couple. And Judy so will have, on. Judy, Judy will have a couple. And and Jeff will pull out a couple of good ones. Jeff will want one. A couple. I mean, think about, he brings the songs we wouldn't normally do. Pretty soon Josh will be Great. singing one. Josh. Josh will Franco never be. Will be Josh will one. never be singing one. You know, Jim Griner will sing a song. You know? but I think uh, Rob might sing a song. Maybe, we promised it on King maybe, Big. Maybe Ken will sing a song. Yeah, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's always songs to be sung. It's true. And, and the 650, Kings, we're not going to run out of 650, and they just got back together, those guys. Yeah, there's going to be a few more. Right. So, yeah, there'll be more songs on their list of endless material. True. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm is, thinking, uh, here's what I'm thinking, that we've left some songs out of kind of their middle era, like this era where they made Misfits album and the Sleepwalker album. Well, you're the expert. Yeah, so I just think there's a couple we got to get in there. And then mm-hmm. there's a couple hits like Jukebox Music. Mm-hmm. That was a big hit. We need to play that song for people. There's a couple more we should play that we should add. But also, you know how many songs we've done between the two albums? Here's 14, and here's 18. In my count, that's 32. Yep. 32... So far, that's a lot of tunes to record in a short period of time. I don't even think there's a lot of groups that do that. You know what? Um, I heard the best quote by the guy who did our sound. Do you remember what his name was? Was it Alex? Alex, yeah. So, Alex did our sound at Michael's, and he said to me, I see a lot of bands come in with one album, I hardly see any with two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, no, we, we came up, we've come in with, we've come under budget, you know. I, with the second album. I think both albums, the grand total cost for both albums is somewhere around $1,000. And they've been given both to tr- charities. All to charity. Well, all the money from it's to charity, but all the money that it cost to manufacture came from me. <laughs> I had to pay I for know. it. I know. It worked. But it was so little, if you think about that. 1000 bucks to do two albums, full color, Full albums produced exactly our way. And a little can go a long way. Exactly our way. Yeah. Everything, every detail. Yes. It's a good deal. It is a good deal. So. And you can put it in the car. Put it in the car, put it, you know. In the DVD player. Yeah, yeah, go to the DVD player, get it on, you know. Sleepy John, you, he'll be interviewing us again. You can stream it on Spotify. Uh-huh. Do you know, uh, here's something interesting. Right now it's on Spotify. It is? And it's not supposed to be. Mm. It's supposed to be cut out of the U.S. and Canada and uh, India and uh, India and Australia. Really? India, Australia. Yeah. <laughs> it was like making me think, oh, they did this. 
So, but yeah, it's on Spotify. Let's see if I can type it in and get it. Singapore to Hong Kong? Yeah, Singapore to Hong Kong. It's funny how little cities and towns can screw you up in songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, don't you do that one, the Johnny Cash one? Yeah, I've been everywhere. Do you do I, that one? I couldn't tell you how, which town you start off with, you know. <laughs> I've been to Reno. I've been to yeah. Reno, Wichita. I don't know any of them. Yeah, it, you know, you screw up a town, you're gone. That's what I, how that works. Yeah, so, yeah. And um, this is very, very mellow. You know, last time we had... Uh, we had, had so many Rick. music. Rick was mm-hmm. here just, uh, talking away. Yeah. You know, and telling his, his stories with you. Now it's, it's just the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, when I, uh, you know... I, last week I went to see the Who and the and Liam Gallagher opened up. How was Liam Gallagher? Liam Oasis. Yeah, how was that? Well, <clears throat> he played all new stuff, and people kept going. You know, I, I was sitting there, and you know, about halfway through his set, people were going, "Why do you play Wonderwall?" <laughs> And <laughs> already did it, and uh, you know he just kept going, and then he then he finally he said, "Well, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this song pretty familiar to you." And he did uh, Champagne Supernova, hmm. and uh, I love that song. Cool. So uh, yeah, those guys are those guys are had f- fights on stage like the Kinks, you know, right. Yeah, and their brothers. Their brothers. I like the king. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. So it's, there it is. There's no budget on Spotify. Nice, nice. You did it again. Yeah, but it's not supposed to be. It's only. It's not supposed to be in the United States. What is your but favorite song off of that CD? Uh, my favorite, or the the one that I think came out best, or what? Which is all of the above? Living on a thin line. Really? Yeah, you want to hear it? Sure, listen to it. We could probably talk while it's playing. It's got like a wave going on. Right. Like guitar sound. Backups louder than the than the main vocal. This is this is probably super easy to record, huh? How do you mean? Well, like we just probably did it once, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not that way when you're recording the process. Not at all. We went through a process with every one of these songs, fourteen songs. Wow, well, it's it's like. 
that's the last album I recorded with. You know, I, I recorded uh, Sunny Day. And that was almost a f- one take. And right. Then the other one was... Um, was Water with Sunset, and that was almost one take. It's weird. Certain songs or certain times when you're recording, you can just get through a take. And other songs, there's no way. It's going to take, you know, multiple takes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take multiple layers. Well, you know, harmony. recording this particular tune, it was difficult to branch off from leaving what Dave had, had sung, it, it, his thick English accent. It, it was, it was kind of, I couldn't really break away from that. It was, I don't know how to go around it. it sounds rich. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of it's at its pure state with the, with the tune. It's, it's a, it's a fantastic tune. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was the opening on so many episodes of, or one, I don't know how many episodes, but the, the Sopranos, you know, that was kind of, it's, it's a really great tune. Yeah, it's totally. It's felt. I mean, there's a, there's a lot that's going on in that emotionally. It's one of those that was written by Dave instead of by Ray. And still, it's a King's tune. It's not like a solo record. Yeah, and it, it has that that sort of that flavor of um, uh, England in the. Uh, the, the the folk music, you know, it has that. It sounds very folky, you know, very English. Yeah, uh, it. But we make o- it overall, over. that is that is. I remember when I, I didn't really even know that song existed, and just listening to it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very apropos for what's going on today, you know. Is that what made you pick that as a song we should do? Yeah, I just heard I heard the lyrics and I went I went wow, you know about uh, another century's gone. Mm-hmm. This isn't another century's nearly gone. What are we gonna leave for the young? What are we gonna leave for the young? And that's where it's and, at. Uh, at some the point, kings and the and, you know running around their castles have burned. It's just well, uh, it's great imagery. I just some castles I'm ready to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I used to burn myself uh, back in the day. Burner. <laughs> to a lot of burning. Of burned the, out. Of the, of the Duberinos. He burned out. Yeah, it's good to hear that the burn Doobie out. Brothers are going to be elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's, that's a wow. great thing. That is a great thing. Yeah, I hope Todd Rundgren gets in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. All these guys that deserve, you know, stuff. Spent a lifetime doing rock and roll? You belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But the guys that really shaped rock and roll, you know? Yeah. I know. And they're the warriors of rock and roll. They're still doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay, Billy Joel, you know. And to me, that's yeah. To me, that's that's barely. That's rock not and roll. rock and roll to me. But and a lot of people. It's more like show tune music. Well, but it's not quite that easy. He's a great musician. There's no doubt about it. The Absolutely. Guy, I mean, I, I here I am saying stuff about you know what, what my spouting off my opinions and and here I am the nowhere man talking about these people that are you know, on a, on a certain, wherever they are, and, doing, and have done their thing. But I, I just look at jo- Billy Joel as not, as, as, you know, when I look at the Doobie Brothers, I go, good God, that's just amazing body of work. Oh, uh, yeah, and their songs are so loved. And the musicianship, you know, and the, those songs really, you know, when I play my cover band, it's like, good God, you play Long Train Running, and people just, Respond yeah. to it right away. Yeah, I love playing that. Song. Such a great tune. So, 
I haven't even. I haven't, I'd love to do a, a Michael McDonald. I think I remember so. the doobies from pretty much as young as I ever was. I mean, did you remember from What's Happening? Did you see him on that? No. I saw that on TV. What's Happening it was this cool TV show, and the doobies were on it, and they had this cool line. The guy said, what doobie you be? Yeah. It was well, totally I, just, cool. I just remember the doobie brothers from, from my high school days. I mean, they were just them and cream and... You know, Zeppelin, yeah, you know, all those guys, They're just. And then I ended up seeing them. Um, um, I won tickets, my second concert ever, and it was Eddie Money open for the Doobie Brothers New Year's Eve. Wow. L.A. Forum, 1979. It was the height of their popularity for sure. Michael McDonald, they just had you know, taking it to the street. It was a big hit. And they could sing those background vocals live. They did it all live. It was that was one of the best shows. Yeah. Patrick Simmons' hair was still really long. He looked like this long, cool. Yeah. There was a there dude. was a there was a gig I did back in the eighties. I opened I did a, a, a opening thing. And uh, yeah, the Doobie, Doobie Brothers were the headliner, and uh, and I think it was the first time they got back together in quite some time. But it was just amazing to hear them. Sing do their stuff and people were they were they were trying to get off the stage and people keep people wouldn't let them get off the stage it just you know and it's just one tune after the other but they were just so good they were really, alive. i think uh, their vocals were usually really good their musicianship was good and the songs were tasty they weren't you know trivial they were just they're really good and, and think and about black water i mean that song yeah. Everybody loves that. You know, Ty, Ty, Ty Ram was still in the group at that time, so, yeah, it was just listening to him and meeting him and, you know, and uh, getting to play with him. He's just an amazing musician. Great sense of, I mean, they all have a great sense of harmony, those guys. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, he played some live stuff uh, recently on a, on a radio show, and... Uh, Stuff that you know, hasn't been aired, and it's just wow, these guys think, are so good. I think to be in a band that makes it, you know, you got to be good. Everybody's got to be really good, or else your band might go far, but it might not make it. And the Doobies really made it, you know. Um, I saw the Linda Ronstadt movie the other night. Really? Yeah, and I got to say, she took it really far too. Oh, what a, like, what a great, what singer. an amazing career, what an amazing really. vocal vocalist. Yeah, if you haven't seen that movie, you should go I'll see, see that it. movie. It's <sighs> super good. I've heard uh, there's a few films that there's a, one about Judy Garland right now. I, I want to see that too. But I hear it's pretty depressing. But that that well, poor I think woman, her life is depressing. That poor, that poor woman was just abused. And then terribly and then abused. abusive. Yeah, but she was abused as a child. They took advantage of her as a child. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it's the problem with the, being a child actor. You know, that's a dangerous thing about that. You know. Yeah, a lot of people they're just rushing to get their kids into these things like modeling and movies. The parents take advantage of them. It's not the a people. very good place to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not good. And, you know, especially you know, an innocent person, and uh, and then these people just take advantage of them. Monetarily and emotionally and physically and sexually and all, all the above. Yeah, not good. So we could do better. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. So the uh, the proceeds of, of these albums going to uh, the two charities. Uh, uh, the first one being Guitars Not Guns, and uh, mm-hmm. the second one being the Animal Shelter. Right. Really two good causes. And, um, you know, that's what we're supporting here, you know, with, with, these, uh, with these CDs. There's so many good musicians in these bands. Yeah. I don't think people realize, like, how many bands that make up the musicians in this band. Okay, let's look at this. John Michael. What bands are you in? Uh, I got my, my cover band, John Michael Band. And then I got the 
the Sinatra group, the Come Fly With Me, and then I got the Bog Iron, Celtic group, um, then I'm in, in Village Green, mm-hmm. and I'm in a uh, group called Jump with the other John Michael, um, and Patrick Golden, who's in um, Bog Iron, a really good guitarist. Um, you know, the, the the cover group that I've got, I've got, I've got all these Tyrians in it. Listen to this. Dylan, Dylan Rose is in it. Uh, Dave De Silva. You know, when they come off a tour, they play around town with me, and uh, really, it's an honor to be able to play with these guys. They're just so oh, good. You know, an amazing man. Keith Whelan uh, kind of uh, runs, kind of booking the, the Coombo over there. Really amazing drummer. Uh, Dave Ellison, really good drummer, uh, playing with uh, Craig Underwood, uh, uh, Lexi's son, he was a really good drummer. Um, I got Avi Gonzalez on bass. I got uh, um, I have Michael. K- I, I have all these guys that I just you know. Well, Will McDougal is going to sit in with yeah. us tomorrow night. You mentioned yeah. Vinnie Johnson. Earlier. Vinnie Johnson's a really underrated guitarist. Uh, he was he was going to be on this uh, Village Green. Uh, project and uh, he yeah. decided he didn't want to do it and then Jeff uh, Ebich uh, who's a great guitarist uh, and Fishhook and, and his uh, tribute to Linda, Linda Ronstadt that's really that was really good I saw that at the Coamboa uh, with Will McDougall and uh, uh, was the uh, Carol King is what, what it was they did the Linda Ronstadt uh, tribute over at uh, Michael Summan yeah, and they were all. It was good. It was really good stuff. It's it's a lot of hard work that uh, everybody puts into these tribute uh, groups. Um, totally. You know, uh, like like the guys in Locomotive Breath. That's it's a lot of work, and they do it so well. The singer writer is really good. He's got a great range, and uh, Daniel Lewis who runs that group. Um, with uh, with uh, Ted Welty, the guitarist, uh, you know, just the, a lot of talent in that group too. Yeah, um, yeah, they're just they're all really good. The drummer is really good, and um, you know, uh, just there, every, there's a lot of talent in the area. You know, when you really look at it in Santa Cruz. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at it right now. Let, let me let me go down this list a little bit more. So we got like Judy Appleby too. Oh, and great what band's Judy in? Seventh Wave. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jade. Jade. She's got that going. Um, you know she's in Village Green. She's in Village Green. She she really uh, it's really it's really nice to sing with with Judy. She really she has a really nice timbre to her voice. Uh, it's very easy to blend with her and to harmonize. She just has a good sense of harmony. Totally. And um, there's me, and really, yeah. I got this band, but somehow I'm always playing with somebody else too. Like I played with Vinnie Johnson a couple week a week ago, a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, and I played with Dave, Dave uh, Ellison two times in the yeah. last couple of weeks. Great drummer. And I play with Rick a lot. So Dave Doe, you play with. Yeah, Dave's in this group. I played with you recently in this show. Yeah, and uh, so then Rick, uh, he's also got a bunch of little band things going on, but mainly with Village Green these days. Um, he had this band TV show though with Vinny, mm-hmm. right? And uh, Jeff's the fish hook dude in the other bands, and Josh plays in a band with Jeff also, right? Yeah. What are they called? Do you remember? The mock-ups? Yeah. The mock-ups. Rob uh, Vickers also plays with Jeff in some band. What's that place in San Jose they play? Poorhouse uh, Bistro. Bistro. Poorhouse Bistro, which they do theme nights with bands. Theme uh, nights. Yeah, so they'll do the Stones or the, the, the Kinks. Um, so that's what they do. They do a... Uh, um, it's... Um, it's a jam night, but they do uh, theme theme stuff. Uh, I, I forgot to mention the other band. Oh yeah, it's a really good uh, tribute group around here. They who's that? 
That would be Dylan Rose's dad, uh, Jim oh, Rosen- yeah. Rosenberg. Not uh, so young. Not so young to do all that Neil Young stuff. Yeah, really that's good. a really good band. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Keith Wheeland is in there, Keith Graves. Uh, Keith, Keith's back uh, from being on tour with Kid Rock. So he's he's back in town, really good drummer, great bassist. Mm-hmm. Plays, he plays in the John Michael group, too. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I played with Keith years ago. Yeah. Many years ago. Fun guy. Totally. Very up guy. And we also got Dave Doe here. He's been doing the the solo thing for a couple years now. Yeah, he does does a lot of work around town. He does a lot of uh, solo stuff. And he was in the the Doe Bros with you. For 10 years. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, what he does in the Village Green is, yeah, he does all the... uh, you know, the Lolas and the all day and all night and and uh, you really got me uh, a destroyer and probably next the next uh, group of songs he'll be doing some more so uh, yeah. it's, it's all good really try and to then, feature everybody you know and then uh, this guy Dale Ackerman oh god what a musician he's a really good great musician yeah, he came in uh, right at the end and gave us some help on the low budget song. We yeah. didn't we didn't really have it sounding quite full enough, and I was I was kind of frustrated, and I was hoping it was going to work out because the album's called No Budget. Yeah, without the song Low Budget, it wouldn't have been very good to name yeah. the album No Budget. Yeah, he's another Doobie Brother guy. Uh, yeah, he he sure is. Yeah, with uh, with uh, Richard Bryant, we're we're kind of on the. Uh, '90s, uh, late '80s version of that group. We know the we know some doobies. I got some doobies. And, you know, some of us smoke a lot of doobies. Santa Cruz. Yeah, it's a doobie. It's a doobie kind of situation. And today is the uh, anniversary of the '89 quake on right. October 17th. Where were you? We are, we were both in LA. I was in Los Angeles avoiding it. I didn't yeah. know it was going to happen, and I'm glad I missed it. I was in L.A., and the first thing I heard was the Bay Bridge had collapsed. And yeah, I had this Nimitz whole idea freeway. of the Bay Bridge just completely collapsing. And then all those poor people that got pancaked in that Nimitz collapse. Yeah, horrible. Just horrible. Yeah, are we ever really prepared for an earthquake? I don't think so. No. Because they can be really big. Yeah. And we haven't had the big one yet. And it all comes tumbling down. Yeah. But we had a little small one the other day. San Francisco had a little small one the other day. Yep. And then and then L.A. had a few big ones a, a few weeks ago. Right? I also moved to Santa Cruz um, two weeks before the L.A. earthquake. So I missed that one also. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm fairly earthquake lucky. I was in L.A. at that time when that earthquake happened. I think it was a 91 or 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was on top 90, of a... 94. Was it 94? Yeah. That was the year I moved here. Okay. I'm trying to think. I thought it was earlier than that, but yeah, I thought it was there. Yeah, earthquakes. Kind of a freaky thing, you know. But, you know, we worry about them, and of course we're not prepared for them. They are devastating, but at the same point, they don't happen, like, all the time. It's not devastating. It's not like going through a hurricane. No, and those things come around every year, right? Or every Um, couple years. Well, I remember remember being... They're predictable. I remember (laughs) one, one year I was in... Illinois, I was doing a stage, uh, I was doing the Elvis act, and uh, I was working at Marriott's Great American, in, uh, in what they called it the Chicago Park, and those people were freaked out about earthquakes, and we were having tornado watches. So you'd have to go under, you'd have to go down to the basement or, or oh, go yeah. underground. And I'm going, you people worry about earthquakes and you got tornadoes coming coming at you? Exactly. 
I'll, I'll, you got a 400 I'll mile take an hour the wind. earthquake. Yeah. But they, it's still devastating, but it's devastating like once in a while. Yeah. Well, any, 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 not any, not once a any, any thing that, that happens, you know, uh, you know, with, with weather and, and, uh, the earth moving, it's, uh, or a, or a tidal wave. I think it's a good a good reminder to us humans. Yeah. Yep. There are things we can't mess with. No. It's kinda like it's kinda like the Titanic on a moonless night. Thinking that, that thinking that you're unsinkable and then boom, you hit a mountain of ice. That you didn't think was gonna be there. But there it was. Wrong place, wrong time. Oops, we don't have enough flight books. Oh. And it'll take four hours for anybody to get to us. Yeah. Unsinkable. It was unthinkable. Yeah, in 28 degrees water. Macaronic. Yeah. Macaronic. Mm -hmm. What's it mean? Denoting language, especially burlesque verse. I don't know. Containing words or inflections from one very language. Skunky right now. Introduced to the context of another. That's just that's Santa Cruz smell. <laughs> yep. Right. Are you trying? I'm getting a, getting like a little bit, bit of yeah. a contact thing going on here. Woo! Yeah. Trying pretty hard there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I haven't gotten high in about 15 years. I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. Most people say so. Uh, they stop it. It's like it's a clarity, a certain amount of... Yeah, I haven't had a drink in almost 15 years. So, yeah. I haven't... I'm, I'm drinking one right now, actually. I can't say anything about that. Well, <laughs> I'm drinking brandy right now. Yeah, but you could stop. I couldn't. I don't drink that much, hardly at all. It's it's fairly surprising to most people, but um, the most drinks I'll drink in a night is two. At our last gig, I drank zero. Yeah, but you I, can I, have two and not have to have two the next night. Right, I've never been in that situation with alcohol. Yeah, and not have to have two or three the next night, or three or four. No, I go many nights or five or six any. the next night. So it's just like. But uh, I sing the song "I Ain't Drunk," and he had like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. He had a whole bunch of. Well, drinks. then there's the song "Alcohol." You yeah. know, demon alcohol. Yeah, so that's the cue for the next tune. Okay, let's uh, cue it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the old demon alcohol, I tell you. Well, uh, honestly, okay, so let's talk about alcohol before the song hits. There's so many different drugs that everybody gets caught in. Mm -hmm. It looks like alcohol is almost the worst of all of it. Almost better, worse than heroin, anything. Really? I think. Yeah, well... As they say, too much of anything. Yeah, that is true too. So here we are. Position. Such a shame. 
Did you just find another harmony? I think this song is really well recorded. I think on so, On the too. album. It's balanced. Yes. Instrument-wise and vocal-wise, and the whole thing together. The mandolin and everything. It adds that little high endy. That's an interesting thing to talk about too. I mean, the process was so different at Rick's, including mix and everything else. Tequila. Disappear. I wanted to go Why didn't you do that? Because I didn't hit, hear it until it was all done. If we'd have had another week, maybe, I would have heard that and said, we got to do that at the ending. Yeah. But yeah. we didn't. Yeah. It was tight. Oh, what's this one? Where have all the good times gone? I think this sounds great. I love the way this song came out. It's all real, real listenable to me. I know I was so critical of it like there at the end because we were just mixing and it was still fluid like it was changeable for a while. And now it's static like it's done. But I'm cool with it. Like I've listened to it many times it since. It is. It is finished. Yeah, it's, it's done. finished. That's what you got to say at some point. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's an article I was reading, and the guy was talking about how with computers and everything, it's hard for anybody to finish stuff because they can just keep editing and keep doing. And he said that there's kind of sometimes a good thing when you have limitations and you have to finish. And this is a great example of we pressured ourselves to have to finish 
and still make it as good as we could. I think it's great. So, yeah. I just hit stop, pause. Yeah. So, what is the follow up uh, as far as the next? I think we do shows. I think the follow up to an yeah. album is play shows. But we're going to do a couple more, a couple of new songs. Is that the idea? Definitely. Um, new songs and new places. We gotta play some different places, right? Yeah. We've really only played, what, two places? Mm hmm. Well, we can do better than that. What I noticed th that. We almost played the Rio. Yeah. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. It, it, it might again in the future. Might again in the future. I might, uh, you know, might, might do some, some shows with some of these tribute groups around here. You know? Yeah. I think that Felton Music Hall sounds like a good. Mm -hmm. Good place to do a concert for us. Yeah, we need a good sized stage with a attentive uh, sound person, and I think we'll do fine. Yeah, we. I think we should play some festivals too. Why? How we wouldn't want a King Spain? How are we going to play a festival? We're just gonna go on stage and do it. We got to keep asking about the festivals, but. Eventually, they'll let us in, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And Tribute to the Kings, and we'll be popular, and then we'll be doing more of them. Yeah. Of course, and we don't want to make it the hard way. No. Yeah. It's like gremlins happen at that part of the song. There's two vocals like layered over yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it always sounds like Don't, gremlins to me. It's some whale sounds or something. <laughs> it just is what it is, but it's way weird. Two minutes and 27 seconds. Uh, a whole song in that. Oh, there it goes again. Right. I think it's the backup vocal, like, mixed with the lead. You can take the hard way. and take the hard way. That's like a barn burner. It is. That one kicks. It does kick. Ah. Now what? What? Here's hypothetical. Yeah. yeah. Just a thought. Right. And we, we do. We do. If we open up for, say, 
a um, what do you call it? A band. Uh, a locomotive breath. Yeah, locomotive breath. What if we were to open up with the driving tunes? Like which one? Like the hard way or, or yeah. the or the or the all day and night. Say you open up with Dave with all day and then come into something that's about third or fourth down. And then you know, get into the body of the of the of the sets. Yeah, or the set. I think that's a great idea. It's Hit that driving hard. thing. Hit them hard right in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. This is a good song. It really is. I love this part right here. Ray can write a good tune. The who part. Change the world and do it again. Say you will, but you don't know when. Started. Here we go round again. Do it again. Four minutes and thirty four seconds. That's too long for the radio, huh? It, well, you can fade it out, you know. Uh, if you're going to do a little podcast thing, just fade it out right about here, you know. And you think to that. Oh, yeah, there's this part here, yeah. A new car, a new car. A new bones. nose. Yeah, that's it. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. To where you once belong. Yeah, so this is 1966 here. I noticed that. Why does it say 1966 there? Well, on our other thing, it says because Ray Davies' copyright was 1966. Oh. Our copyright is 2019. Mm. But I don't know where it says that, but it did in a different view. Maybe if I just go to the album view, it'll say that. Yeah, so right here, see? 1966, The Kinks. Oh, yeah. 2019, The Village Green. Never noticed that before. But 
It's weird that we put the 1966 up here. Like we made this album when I was two. You were two in 66? Yeah. Wow. Well, 66, I was... I was pretty fucking talented for a two-year-old. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> There's some time travel going on here. Why were we so pressured on time when it was all time travel going on? I don't know. 66. We already made this album in 66. Let's see. In 66, I would been be... been done for a long time. Well, I was almost born in 58. Mm -hmm. So I would be... Seven years before me. I would be eight. Mm -hmm. Yep, that sounds right. Interesting. Yeah, he's the same age as my brother Steve. He's April 58. Yeah, and now it's like, and now the, the earthquake of 89 is 30 years ago, mm -hmm. which is very strange to me. It was 30 years ago today. 30 years that ago. That the ground began to shake. 30 years ago, the ground was shaking. It was going in and out of phase. There was a whole lot of shaking going on. And it's on. guaranteed to make you dazed. You know, Jerry Lee Lewis. May I introduce to you? Wasn't even a, a thought at that time. Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's anything like else do you want to talk about on this uh, this podcast? Um, well, you know, when you how do we how do we wrap this? How one do up? we wrap this up? You know, I think people should seek it out online. No budget. I'm going to attach it to the podcast. Mm -hmm. But I think people should listen to the album. And I have to tell you, one thing I would really like from people that listen to it mm -hmm. is not money. What I'd really like is to hear what they think about it. Yeah. Like some kind of a review, even mm -hmm. a good one, mate, or nice try, or hey, I really loved the way you layered the vocals there. That was amazing. Yeah. So, you know, just some reaction to it. Like, that was good. I hear that too. What do you hear? Helicopter? Uh, I couldn't tell if that was a car or that was, the, that was an earthquake or... That was... A little um, something just happened, yeah. Yeah, that was somebody, you know, walking down in what some high it? heels. It's 9 o'clock. That's right. Well, yeah, we don't have a, a second story here. So there's nobody walking down the that's stairs. That's right. Nobody's heels. walking in those high heels with the one I toe that's... I think that's what's happening. ...that's sticking out like that without the toenail polish. I, Julianne Moore, I would definitely... That would be a deal breaker for me. I probably would not go home with her. Why? Because of that toe sticking out of the shoe. Really? I'm being sarcastic. I mean, I think that would not stop a person. There's a lot of people that's ridiculous that would love, to worry about that, that would love to to look at those feet. Yeah, I'm not a particular. And then there's fan a lot of, of that. And, the, and then there's a lot of but, you know. There's somebody said to me, I said, "God, that looks very chauvinistic," and I go, "Well, that was an album of the of the uh, the Kinks. That was mm -hmm. a no. That's a direct. Um, it's that's a parody." A, yeah, it's a parody. Uh oh. Somebody's calling. It's Jenny Brown. You know what? I think that's our out. Yeah. That's how this ends. That's your wife calling you. Let's Go let's on. let's get her in. Say accept. Oh, what happened? Accept? Dang, we didn't accept. Miss call. You better call her back. Yeah, that sounded cool. I wanted to talk. Yeah. No 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 no. No 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 no. We're not answering that way. We're FaceTiming. Uh, we're FaceTiming now? FaceTime. Paul. We're FaceTiming? Yeah. Oh, from the... Uh... Are you there, honey? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hey there. How are you doing? So good to see you. Oh, yes. Guy, <laughs> this guy is guy. Yeah, he's over there. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. He's moving on his camera. I don't know. I just don't know what to make of it. What is that? You talk to her? She snorted. Did she? <laughs> we made her laugh. We're doing a po We're doing a pod. <laughs> You're our guest on the podcast now. Yes. Bloody hell. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is there any other kind? Is there any other kind of hell besides bloody hell? Watson, what is it? Did you have a good evening tonight, Jenny? Did you? Yeah. Incredible, huh? You you know you called and it would these it was like this. We were hoping for a caller. It was like. <laughs> It was like, here he was talking away, and all of a sudden, it, it was almost like some kind of spaceship or it was something. was music that came out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what is that? Boom, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Boom, doom, 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 doom. So you're doing the half of the eyeball thing, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is my good eye, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. now, John Michael was telling me he could tell truth from one of my eyes earlier. Yeah. Is that you in the background? You gotta be able to see both eyes. Uh, no, Is that's her sister, Lori. Oh my God. But Facebook thinks that Lori is Jenny. Interesting. Always, uh, you want to tag Lori? Yeah. Interesting. The answer is no. Yeah, I, do I, thought, not that was, I thought that was Lori. I thought that was you. That's Lori. Oh, there's Jenny. Oh, there's a. You look like your eyes look like your son's. They look like Lucas's. Yeah, they look like yeah, Lucas. I would say so. Yeah. Same we have. Is is that rooster still alive? <laughs> Cockle doodle doo. Cockle doodle doo. It went to an old rooster home for uh, old rooster photography roosters. Yeah. Oh, really? The neighbor dog? It's oh. actually a tragic story. It's terrible. See, this turned into a really more interesting podcast now. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Or, or as, or as uh, Charles Barkley would say, terrible, terrible. This is all terrible. Yeah. Charles Barkley. Yeah. Poor, that beautiful rooster. Yep. Yeah. Podcasting live. Mm. Mm. We've also been listening to it on uh, Spotify. No, no budget. Oh, you're you, you you're do that all you're in Boise Boys. right now. Yes. You are. Yes. She's in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. All these things. I thought you were. It's like were, she's in the other room. It's like you're in the other room. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. Actually, actually, uh, the room. And that's Boise? <laughs> she calls that Boise. Ah, is that you again? No, that's my sister, Jamie. Uh, oh, she, like, she looks like Linda Ronstadt. She kind of does. Yeah. Bang, yeah. bang, bang. There you go. Bring Jeff Evage over here and we'll start doing some Linda Ronstadt tunes with your sister. I was telling uh, I was telling him that that's a good movie. Hmm. It's a powerhouse. It was a powerhouse superstar. Hmm. It's the 30th anniversary of the earthquake, honey. October 17th. 30th yeah. anniversary. Oh, uh, you didn't. It's always a good thing to say. A whole lot of shaking. There was a whole lot of shaking going on 30 years ago. Yeah. In the last couple of days, too. On Monday, on Tuesday, we had Yeah. I didn't. A lot I of people either. a lot of people felt these earthquakes. I didn't hear I didn't feel them. A couple For a lot of people, for a lot of people, a lot of people are very, very nervous right now. Yeah, they're, you know, that's what it is. So. All right, well, good talking to you, Boise.
Good night, sweetheart. Take care from Bye, Jim. All right, thanks for calling in, caller. All right. <laughs> Look at the eyes. We got both of them this time. You're on the big screen? You're on the big screen. We're on the little screen. Little tiny. We're on the little screen. No, That's big. what we are. It's a little tiny thing. We're yeah. actually hearing us through a really good microphone, the too. So <laughs> the toilet, For us, this whole thing day. sounds amazing. Nighty. <laughs> Get on with the show. All right, good night, and tell your mom good night. Yeah, say, say good night to mommy, will you? To mom. Mom. I think she's gone. She's gone. There we go. All right, there you go. I made her laugh. That was great. And, uh, okay, so you don't need any more of me, right? Wait a minute. we got to conclude this, you know. Okay, conclude what, what is this uh, podcast called? don't know. The next gig. It's Top of the Bay. Top of the Bay. Top of the Bay podcast. Earthquake Number weather. two. Yes. A, d- a day beyond the shake. No more shaking. Except it's very kinky. Now I feel like we should play the car song, Shake It Up. The shake folk. <clears throat> That's what happens on Spotify. It goes right to the next song. Does it? Were you gonna Were you gonna let Judy sing? Or? Well, yeah, but I figured we could talk a little bit. About Are you gonna this, You're gonna edit process. all this stuff, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, how would you do that? Um, when you If you were to play a song, would you re EQ it so it vocally it came up when you talked and then because it sounded so oh, like low. ducking, yeah, like ducking kind of thing. You'd have to re-EQ it. Well, do you know what happened? Because we're talking and it's playing through the speaker into the microphone. Oh, okay. So that we just heard that while, and we're just as in the microphone as it is. I see, I see. That's not like a high quality reproduction of that song. Okay. But it could be easily replaced. Yeah. By a high quality reproduction. Yeah, I noticed when, I can't can't say anything about it. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to. Air it. What, what I'm just about to t- say right now. Why would I air out the interesting thing you're about to tell us? Now? Well, it's just the, the vocally <laughs> and the beginning. It, it's oh, a yeah. little low, a little low. And it. Well, you heard what I my comment was about the backup oh. vocal. It's la- it was louder than the main vocal. Yeah. And there's no reason the backup vocal should have been loud at all. Yeah. No, the vocals were were there. There's no England now. It's really yeah. ver- barely there in the original recording. Uh, it, but we make oh, a overall, over. that is that is. I remember when I, I didn't really even know that song existed, and just listening to it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very apropos for what's going on today. You know, is that what made you pick that as a song we should do? Yeah, I just heard I heard the lyrics, and I went, I went, wow, you know about. Uh, Another century's gone. Mm-hmm. This isn't another century's nearly gone. What are we going to leave for the young? What are we going to leave for the young? And that's and, where it's uh, at. At some the point, kings and the and, you know running around their castles have burned. It's just well, uh, it's great imagery. I just There's some castles I'm ready to burn. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, you know, I used to burn myself uh, back in the day. Burner. <laughs> to a lot of burning. Of burned the, out. Of the, the Duberinos. He burned out. Yeah, it's good to hear that the burn Doobie out. Brothers are going to be elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's that's a wow. great thing. That is a great thing. Yeah, I hope Todd Rundgren gets in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. All these guys that deserve, you know, stuff. Spent a lifetime doing rock and roll? You belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But the guys that really shaped rock and roll, you know? Yeah. I know. And they're the warriors of rock and roll. They're still doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay, Billy Joel, you know. And to me, that's yeah. To me, that's that's barely. That's rock not and roll. rock and roll to me. But you know, a lot of people. It's more like show tune music. Well, but it's not quite that easy. He's a great musician. There's no, there's no doubt about it. The Absolutely. Guy, I mean, I, I here I am saying stuff about you know what, what my spouting off my opinions and 
and here I am, the nowhere man, talking about these people that are, you know, on a on a certain wherever they are, and doing and have done their thing. But I I just look at jo Billy Joel as not as as you know when I look at the Doobie Brothers, I go, good God, that's just amazing body of work. Oh uh, yeah, and their songs are so loved. And the musicianship, you know, and the, those songs really. You know, when I play my cover band, it's like, good God, you play Long Train Running and people just respond yeah. to it right away. Yeah, I love playing that song. Such a great tune. So, I haven't even, I mean, I'd love to do a, a Michael McDonald. Uh, I think I song. remember the doobies from pretty much as young as I ever was. I mean, did you remember from What's Happening? Did you see him on that? No. I saw that on TV. What's Happening it was this cool TV show, and the Doobies were on it, and they had this cool line. The guy said, what Doobie you be? Yeah. It was well, totally I just, cool. I just remember the Doobie Brothers from, from my high school days. I mean, they were just them and Cream and, you know, Zeppelin. Yeah. You know, all those guys. They're just... And then I ended up seeing them. Um, I won tickets, my second concert ever, and it was Eddie Money open for the Doobie Brothers New Year's Eve. Wow. L.A. Forum, 1979. It was the height of their popularity, for sure. Michael McDonald, they just had, you know, taking it to the street. It was a big hit. And they could sing those background vocals live. They did it all live. It was That was one of the best shows. Yeah. Patrick Simmons' hair was still really long. It looked like this long, cool. Yeah, there was a there dude. was a there was a gig I did back in the eighties. I opened I did a, a, a opening thing, and uh, yeah, the Doobie, Doobie Brothers were the headliner, and uh, and I think it was the first time they got back together in quite some time. But it was just amazing to hear them do their stuff, and people were they were they were trying to get off the stage, and people keep, people wouldn't let them get off the stage. It just you know, and it's just one tune after the other. But they were just so good. They really, live. I think uh, their vocals were usually really good. Their musicianship was good, and the songs were tasty. They weren't you know trivial. They were just they were really good. Like, and think and about Black Water. I mean that song. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> loves that. You know, Ty, Ty Ty Ram was still in the group at that time, so. I was just listening to him and meeting him and, you know, and uh, getting to play with him. He's just an amazing musician. Great sense of, I mean, they all have a great sense of harmony, those guys. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, he played some live stuff uh, recently on a, on a radio show and uh, stuff that you know, hasn't been aired and it's just, wow. Guys are so good. I think to be in a band that makes it, you know, you got to be good. Everybody's got to be really good, or else your band might go far, but it might not make it. And the Doobies really made it. You know, um, saw the Linda Ronstadt movie the other night. Really? Yeah. And I got to say, she took it really far too. Oh, what a, like what a great, what singer. an amazing career. What an amazing really. local vocalist. Yeah. If you haven't seen that movie, you should go I'll see, see that it. movie. It's super good. I've heard uh, there's a few films that there's a, one about Judy Garland right now. Right? I want to see that too. But I hear it's pretty depressing. But that that well, poor I think woman, her life is depressing. That poor, that poor woman was just abused. And then terribly and abused. then abusive. Yeah, but she was abused as a child. They took advantage of her as a child. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, being a child actor. You know, that's a dangerous thing about that. You know. Yeah, a lot of people they're just rushing to get their kids into these things like modeling and movies. Parents and, take advantage of them. It's not the a people. very good place to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not good. And, you know, especially you know, an innocent person, and uh, and then these people just take advantage of them. Monetarily and, and emotionally and physically and sexually and all all the above. Yeah, not good. So we could do better. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. So the uh, the proceeds of, of these albums going to uh, 
the two charities, uh, uh, the first one being Guitars Not Guns, and mm -hmm. uh, the second one being the Animal Shelter. Right. Really two good causes. And, um, you know, that's what we're supporting here, you know, with, with, these, uh, with these CDs. There's so many good musicians in these bands. Yeah. I don't think people realize, like, how many bands that make up the musicians in this band. Okay, let's look at this. John Michael, what bands are you in? Uh, I got my, my cover band, John Michael Band. And then I got the, the Sinatra group, the Come Fly With Me, and then I got the Bog Iron, Celtic group. Um, then I'm in, in Village Green, mm -hmm. and I'm in a uh, group called Jump with the other John Michael. Um, and Patrick Golden, who's in um, Bog Iron, a really good guitarist. Um, you know, the, the the cover group that I've got, I've got, I've got all these Tyrians in it. Listen to this. Dylan, Dylan Rose is in it, uh, Dave De Silva. You know, when they come off a tour, they play around town with me, and uh, really, it's an honor to be able to play with these guys. They're just so oh, good. You know, an amazing man. Keith Whelan, the... Uh, Kind of uh, runs, kind of booking the, the Colombo over there. Really amazing drummer. Uh, Dave Ellison, really good drummer. Uh, playing with uh, Craig Underwood, uh, uh, Lexi's son. He was a really good drummer. Um, I got Avi Gonzalez on bass. I got uh, um, I have Michael. K I, I have all these guys that I just, you know, Will McDougal. Is going to sit in with yeah. us tomorrow night. You mentioned yeah. Vinnie Johnson. Earlier. Vinnie Johnson's a really underrated guitarist. Uh, he was he was going to be on this uh, Village Green uh, project, and uh, he yeah. decided he didn't want to do it. And then Jeff uh, Evich, uh, who's a great guitarist, uh, and Fishhook, and and his uh, tribute to Linda, Linda Ronstadt. That's really that was really good. I saw that at the Coamba uh, with Will McDougal. Uh, it was the uh, Carol King is what what it was? They did the Linda Ronstadt uh, tribute over at uh, Michael Sumner. Yeah, and they were all. It was good. It was really good stuff. It's it's a lot of hard work that uh, everybody puts into these tribute uh, groups. Um, totally. You know, uh, like like the guys in Locomotive Breath. That's it's a lot of work, and they do it so well. The singer writer is really good. He's got a great range. And uh, Daniel Lewis, who runs that group, um, with uh, with uh, Ted Welty, the guitarist. Uh, you know, just a lot of talent in that group too. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, just, they're all really good. The drummer is really good, and um, you know. Uh, just there, there's a lot of talent in the area, you know. When you really look at it in Santa Cruz. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at it right now. Let, let me let me go down this list a little bit more. So we got like Judy Appleby oh, too. And great what band's Judy in? Seventh Wave. Uh huh. Uh, Jade. Jade. She's got that going. Um, you know, she's. In the Village Green, or? she's in the Village Green. She she really uh, it's really it's really nice to sing with with Judy. She really has a really nice timbre to her voice. Uh, it's very easy to blend with her and to harmonize. She just has a good sense of harmony. Totally. And um, there's me, and really, yeah. I got this band, but somehow I'm always playing with somebody else too. Like I played with Vinnie Johnson a couple week a week ago, a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, and I played with Dave. Yeah, Ellison, two times in the yeah, last couple of weeks. Great drummer. And I play with Rick a lot. So Dave Doe, you play with? Yeah. Dave's in this group. I played with you recently in this show. Yeah. And, uh, so then Rick, uh, he's also got a bunch of little band things going on, but mainly with Village Green these days. Um, he had this band TV show, though, with Vinny. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, Jeff's the fish hook dude in the other bands and Josh plays in a band with Jeff also, right? Yeah. What are they called? Do you remember? The mock ups? 
Yeah. The Muppets. Rob uh, Vickers also plays with Jeff in some band. What's that place in San Jose they play? Poorhouse uh, Be- Bistro. Poorhouse Bistro, which they do theme nights with bands. Theme uh, nights. Yeah, so they'll do the Stones or the, the, the Kinks. Um, so that's what they do. They do a... Uh, um, it's um, it's a jam night, but they do uh, theme theme stuff. Uh, I, I forgot to mention the other band. Oh, yeah. That's a really good uh, tribute group around here. They, Who's that? That would be Dylan Rose's dad, uh, Jim oh, Rosen- yeah. Rosenberg. Not uh, so young. Not so young. They do all the Neil Young stuff. It's yeah, really that's good. a really good band. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Keith Wheeland is in there. Keith Graves. Uh, Keith's, Keith's back uh, from being on tour with Kid Rock. So he's he's back in town. Really good drummer, great bassist. Mm-hmm. Plays, he plays in the John Michael group too. <clears throat> so yeah, I played with Keith years ago. Yeah, many years ago. Fun guy, totally. Very up guy. And we also got Dave Doe here. He's Dave been Doe. doing the, the solo thing for a couple yeah. of years now. Yeah, he does. He does a lot of work around town. He does a lot of uh, solo stuff and. He was in the, you know, the Dobros with you for ten years. Yeah, and uh, he's, you know, what he does in the Village Green is, yeah, he does all the, uh, you know, the Lolas and the, all day and all night, and and uh, he really got me, uh, Destroyer, and probably next the next uh, group of songs he'll be doing some more. So uh, yeah. it's it's all good, really. Try to then, feature everybody, you know. And then uh, this guy, Dale Ackerman. Oh, God, what a musician. He's a really good, great musician. Yeah, he came in uh, right at the end and gave us some help on the low-budget song. We yeah. didn't we didn't really have it sounding quite full enough, and I was, I was kind of frustrated, and I was hoping it was going to work out because the album's called No Budget. Yeah. Without the song Low Budget, it wouldn't have been very good to name yeah. the album No Budget. Yeah, he's another Doobie Brother guy. Uh, yeah, he, he sure is. Yeah, with uh, with uh, Richard Bryant, we're we're kind of on the uh, '90s, uh, late '80s version of that group. We know the we know some doobies. I got some doobies. You know, some of us smoke a lot of doobies. Santa Cruz. Yeah, it's a doobie. It's a doobie kind of situation. And today is the. Uh, anniversary of the 89 quake on right. October 17th. Where were you? We, are, we were both in L.A. I was in Los Angeles avoiding it. Uh, I didn't yeah. know it was going to happen, and I'm glad I missed it. I was in L.A., and the first thing I heard was the Bay Bridge had collapsed. And yeah, I had this whole idea way. of the Bay Bridge just completely collapsing. And then all those poor people that got pancaked in that Nimitz collapse. It horrible. Just horrible. Yeah, are we ever really prepared for an earthquake? I don't think so. No. Because they can be really big. Yeah. And we haven't had the big one yet. And it all comes tumbling down. Yeah. But we had a little small one the other day. San Francisco had a little small one the other day. Yep. And then and then L.A. had a few big ones a, a few weeks ago, right? I also moved to Santa Cruz um, two weeks before the L.A. earthquake, so I missed that one also. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm fairly earthquake lucky. I was in L.A. at that time when that earthquake happened. I think it was a 91 or 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was on top 90, of... A... 94. Was it 94? Yeah. That was the year I moved here. Okay. I'm trying to think. I thought it was earlier than that, but yeah, I thought it was there. Yeah, earthquakes. Kind of a freaky thing, you know. But, you know, we worry about them, and of course we're not prepared for them. They are devastating, but at the same point, they don't happen, like, all the time. It's not devastating. It's not like going through a hurricane. No, and those things come around every year, right? Or every um, couple of years. Well, I remember. I remember They're being, predictable. <laughs> I remember one one year I was in Illinois. I was doing a stage uh, 
I was doing the Elvis act. And uh, I was working at Marriott's Great American in, uh, in, they called it the Chicago Park. And those people were freaked out about earthquakes. And we were having tornado watches. So you'd have to go under, you'd have to go down to the basement or, or oh, go yeah. underground. And I'm going, you people worry about earthquakes? And you got tornadoes coming coming at you? Exactly. I'll, you I'll, got a 400 I'll mile take an the hour wind. earthquake. Yeah. But they, it's still devastating, but it's devastating like once in a while. Yeah. Well, any, 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 not not, once any, any thing that, that happens, you know, uh, you know, with, with weather and, and, uh, the earth moving, it's, uh, or a, or a tidal wave. I think it's a good, a good reminder to us humans. Yeah. Yep. There are things we can't mess with. No. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the Titanic on a moonless night. Thinking that, that. thinking that you're unsinkable and then, boom, you hit a mountain of ice. That you didn't think was going to be there, but there it was. Wrong place, wrong time. Oops, we don't have enough flight books. Oh. And it'll take four hours for anybody to get to us. Yeah. Unsinkable. It was unthinkable. Yeah, in 28 degrees water. Macaronic. Yeah. Macaronic. Mm -hmm. What's it mean? Denoting language, especially burlesque verse. I don't know. Containing words or inflections from one very language. Skunky right now. Introduced to the context of another. That's just that's Santa Cruz smell. <laughs> yep. Are you, are you trying? Wow, I'm getting a, I'm getting like a little bit, bit of yeah. a contact thing going on here. Woo! Yeah. Trying pretty hard there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I haven't gotten high in about 15 years. I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. Most people say so. Uh, they stop it. It's like it's a clarity, a certain amount of... Yeah, I haven't had a drink in almost 15 years. It's, yeah. I haven't... I'm, I'm drinking one right now, actually. I can't say anything about that. Well, <laughs> I'm drinking brandy right now. Yeah, but you could stop. I couldn't. I don't drink that much, hardly at all. It's it's fairly surprising to most people, but um, the most drinks I'll drink in a night is two. At our last gig, I drank zero. Yeah, but you I, can I, have two and not have to have two the next night. Right, I've never been in that situation with alcohol. Yeah, and not have to have two or three the next night, or three or four. No, I go many or nights five or six seven the next night. So it's just like... But uh, I sing the song, I Ain't Drunk, and he had like 12, 13, 14, he had a whole bunch of... Well, drinks. then there's the song, Alcohol, you yeah. know? Demon Alcohol. Yeah, so that's the cue for the next tune. Okay, let's uh, cue it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the old demon alcohol, I tell you. Well, uh, honestly, okay, so let's talk about alcohol before the song hits. There's so many different drugs that everybody gets caught in. Mm -hmm. It looks like alcohol is almost the worst of all of it. Almost better, worse than heroin, anything. Really? I think. Yeah, well... As they say, too much of anything. Yeah, that is true too. So here we are.
position. Did you just find another harmony? I think this song is really well recorded. I think so, On the too. album. It's balanced. Yes. Instrument-wise and vocal-wise, and the whole thing together. The mandolin and everything. It adds that little high end -y. That's an interesting thing to talk about, too. I mean, the process was so different at Rick's, including mix and everything else. Tequila. Disappear. I wanted to go Why didn't you do that? Because I didn't hit, hear it until it was all done. If we'd have had another week maybe, I would have heard that and said we gotta do that at the ending. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't. Yeah. It was tight. Oh, what's this one? Where have all the good times gone? Static, like it's done. 
but I'm cool with it. Like I've listened to it many times. It since. is. It is finished. Yeah, it's done. Finished. That's what you got to say at some point. Oh yeah. yeah. There's an article I was reading, and the guy was talking about how with computers and everything, it's hard for anybody to finish stuff because they can just keep editing and keep doing it. And he said that there's kind of sometimes a good thing when you have limitations and you have to finish. And this is a great example of we pressured ourselves to have to finish and still make it as good as we could. I think it's great. So, yeah. I just hit stop, pause. Yeah. So, what is the follow up uh, as far as the next? I think we do shows. I think the follow up to an album is play shows. But we're going to do a couple more, a couple of new songs. Is that the idea? Definitely. Um, new songs and new places. We gotta play some different places, right? Yeah. We've really only played, what, two places? Mm hmm. Well, we can do better than that. What I noticed th that. We almost played the Rio. Yeah. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. It, it, it might again in the future. Might again in the future. I might, uh, you know, might, might do some, some shows with some of these tribute groups around here. You know? Yeah. I think that Felton Music Hall sounds like a good. Mm -hmm. Good place to do a concert for us. Yeah, we need a good sized stage with a attentive uh, sound person, and then I think we'll do fine. Yeah, we. I think we should play some festivals too. Why? How we wouldn't want a kink Spain? How are we going to play a festival? We're just gonna go on stage and do it. We got to keep asking about the festivals, but. Eventually, they'll let us in, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And tribute to the kings, and we'll be popular, and then we'll be doing more of them. Yeah. Of course, and we don't want to make it the hard way. No. Yeah. It always sounds like don't, gremlins to me. It's some whale sounds or something. <laughs> it just is what it is. It's way weird. Two minutes and 27 seconds. A whole song in that. Oh, there it goes again. Right. I think it's the backup vocal, like mixed with the lead. It's like a 
barn burner. This that one kicks. It does kick. Ah. Now what? What? Here's hypothetical. Yeah. Just yeah. a thought. Now we, we do. We do. If we open up for, say, a um, what do you call it? A band. Uh, a locomotive breath. Yeah, locomotive breath. What if we were to open up with the driving tunes? Like which one? Like the hard way or, or yeah. the or the or the all day and night. So you open up with Dave with all day and then come into something that's about third or fourth down. And then you know, get into the body of the of the of the sets. Uh, or the set. I think that's a great idea. It's a driving hard. thing. Hit them hard right in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. It's a good song. It really is. I love this part right here. Break around a good tune. The Who part. Change the world and do it again. Give it all up and start all over. You say you will, but you don't know when. Four minutes and 34 seconds. It's too long for the radio. Huh? Well, you can fade it out, you know. If you're gonna do a little podcast thing, just fade it out right about here, you know. Oh yeah, there's this part here, yeah. Yeah, so it says 1966 here. I noticed that. Why does it say 1966 there? Well, on our other thing, it says because Ray Davies' copyright was 1966. Oh. Our copyright is 2019. 
Mm. But I don't know where it says that, but it did in a different view. Maybe if I just go to the album view, it'll say that. Yeah, so right here, see? 1966, The Kinks. Oh, yeah. 2019, The Village Green. Never noticed that before. But it's weird that we put the 1966 up here. Like we made this album when I was two. You were two in 66? Yeah. Wow. 66, I was... I was pretty fucking talented for a two-year-old. Yeah, you were. <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> There's some time travel going on here. Seems, Why six, were we so pressured on time when it was all time travel going on? I don't know. 66. We already made this album in 66. Let's see. In 66, I would been be... been done for a long time. Well, I was almost born in 58. Mm -hmm. So I would be... Seven years before me. I would be eight. Yep, that sounds right. Interesting. Yeah, he's the same age as my brother Steve. He's April 58. Yeah, and now it's like... And now the, the earthquake of 89 is 30 years ago, mm -hmm. which is very strange to me. It was 30 years ago today 30 years that ago That the ground began to shake 30 years ago the ground was shaking It was going in and out of phase There was a whole lot of shaking going on And it's on. guaranteed to make you days You know Jerry Lee Lewis May I introduce to you Wasn't even a, a thought at that time Jerry Lee Lewis Yeah Well uh, yeah. It's Anything like else do you want to talk about on this uh, this podcast? Um, well, you know, when you how do we how do we wrap this? How one do up? we wrap this up? You know, I think people should seek it out online. No budget. I'm going to attach it to the podcast. Mm -hmm. But I think people should listen to the album. And I have to tell you, one thing I would really like from people that listen to it mm -hmm. is not money. What I'd really like is to hear what they think about it. Yeah. Like some kind of a review, even mm -hmm. a good one, mate, or nice try, or hey, I really loved the way you layered the vocals there. That was amazing. Yeah. So, you know, just some reaction to it. Like, that was good. I hear that too. What do you hear? Helicopter? Uh, I couldn't tell if that was a car or that was, the, that was an earthquake or... That was... A little um, something just happened. Yeah. yeah, that was somebody, you know, walking down in what some high it? heels. It's 9 o'clock. That's right. Well, yeah, we don't have a, a second story here. So there's nobody walking down the that's stairs. That's right. Nobody's heels. walking in those high heels with the one I toe that's... I think that's what's happening. ...that's sticking out like that without the toenail polish. I, Julianne Moore, I would definitely... That would be a deal breaker for me. I probably would not go home with her. Why? Because of that toe sticking out of the shoe. Really? I'm being sarcastic. I mean, I think that would not stop a person. There's a lot of people That's ridiculous that, would love, to worry about that, that would love to, to look at those feet. Yeah, I'm not a particular and then there's fan a lot of, of that. And, the, and then there's a lot of... But, you know, there's, somebody said to me, said, God, that looks very chauvinistic. And I go, well, that was an album of the, of the, uh, the Kinks. That was mm -hmm. a note. That's a direct... Um, it's a it's parody... A, that's yeah, a parody. Uh oh. Somebody's calling. It's Jenny Brown. You know what? I think that's our out. Yeah. That's how this ends. That's your wife calling you. Let's Go let's on. let's get her in. Say accept. Oh, what happened? Accept? Dang, we didn't accept. Miss call. You better call her back. Yeah, that sounded cool. I wanted to talk. Yeah. No, 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 no. No 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 no. We're not answering that way. We're FaceTiming. Oh, we're FaceTiming now? FaceTime. Paul. We're FaceTiming? Yeah. Oh, from the... Uh... Are you there, honey? Hello? Hello? Hi there. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. Yes. <laughs> Guy, <laughs> he's this guy. Yeah, he's over there. Yeah, he's over there. 
Uh, hey, we'll be on this camera. I don't know. I just want to make it. What is that? The doctor? She Do- snorted. Did she? <laughs> we made her laugh. We're doing a po- we're doing a pod. You're our guest on the podcast now. Yes. Bloody hell. Yeah. Bloody hell. <laughs> is there any other kind? <laughs> <laughs> is there any other kind of hell I don't know. besides bloody Watson, hell? <laughs> Watson, what is it? Did oh, yeah. <laughs> you have a good evening tonight, there, Jenny? Did you? Yeah. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> Incredible, huh? You you know you called and it would these it was like this. We were hoping for a caller. It was like. <laughs> It was like, here he was talking away, and all of a sudden, it, it was almost like some kind of spaceship or something. It was something. music that came out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what is that? Boom, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Boom, doom, 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 doom. So you're doing the half of the eyeball thing, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is my good eye, of course. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, John Michael was telling me he could tell the truth from one of my eyes earlier. Yeah. Is that you in the background? You gotta be able to see both eyes. Uh, no, Is that's her sister Lori. Oh my god. But Facebook thinks that Lori is Jenny. Interesting. Always, uh, you wanna tag Lori in? Interesting. The answer is no. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was you. That's Lori. Oh there's Jenny. Oh there's a you look like your eyes look like your son's. They look like Lucas's. Yeah, they look like Lucas. I would say so. Yeah. Is is that rooster still alive? <laughs> Cockle doodle doo. Cockle doodle doo. It went to an old rooster home for uh, old rooster photography roosters. Yeah. Oh, really? The neighbor dog? It's oh. actually a tragic story. It's terrible. See, this turned into a really more interesting podcast now. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Or, or as, or as uh, Charles Barkley would say, terrible, terrible. This is all terrible. Yeah. Charles Barkley. Yeah, poor, that beautiful rooster. Yep. Yeah. Podcasting live. Mm. Mm. We've also been listening to it on uh, Spotify. No, no budget. Oh, you're you, you you're do that all the you're way in Boise Boise. right now. Yes. You are. Yes. She's in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. All these things. I thought you were. It's like were, she's in the other room. It's like you're in the other room. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. <laughs> and that's Boise? <laughs> she calls that Boise. Ah, is that you again? Uh, oh, she looks like, she looks like Linda Ronstadt. It kind of does, huh? Yeah. Bang, bang, yeah. bang. There you go. I'll bring Jeff Evage over here and we'll start doing some Linda Ronstadt tunes with your sister. I was telling uh, I was telling him that that's a good movie. Hmm. He's a powerhouse. It's the 30th anniversary of the earthquake, honey. October 17th. 30th yeah. anniversary. Oh, uh, you didn't. It's always a good thing to say. A lot of shaking. There was a whole lot of shaking going on 30 years ago. Yeah. The last couple of days, too. On Monday, at, at, on Tuesday, we had yeah. I didn't. A lot I of people. Either. A lot of people felt these earthquakes. I didn't hear. I didn't feel them. A couple. Mm. 
for a lot of people. For a lot of people, a lot of people are very, very nervous right now. Yeah, they're you know, it's what it is. So. All right. Well, good talking to you, Boise. Good night, sweetheart. Take care from. Bye, Jim. All right. Thanks for calling in, caller. All right. <laughs> Look at the eyes. We got both of them this time. You're on the big screen? You're yeah. on the big screen. We're on the little screen. Little tiny. We're on the little screen. Oh, That's big. what we are. It's a little tiny thing. We're yeah. actually hearing us through a really good microphone, the too. So <laughs> the For us, this whole thing me. sounds amazing. Nighty! <laughs> Get on with the show. All right, good night, and tell your mom good night. Yeah, say, say good night to mommy, will you? To mom. Mom. I think she's gone. She gone? There we go. All right, there you go. I made her laugh. That was great. And, uh, okay, so you don't need any more of me, right? Wait a minute. we got to conclude this, you know. Okay, conclude what, it. what is this uh, podcast called? don't know. The next gig. It's Top of the Bay. Top of the Bay. Top of the Bay podcast. Earthquake number weather. two. Yes. A, d- a day beyond the shake. No more shaking. Except it's very kinky. Now I feel like we should play the car song, Shake It Up. Shake <laughs> Oh, my God.
listening to me and my buddies John Michael